Carter here at the intersection. We are actually taking over uh, Zoe Williams' uh, station for a couple of weeks. That's right. We on the <laughs> Zoe What Show, the takeover. The takeover. Continues. So, and it continues. Uh, you can follow us live at the intersection live on YouTube. Go to YouTube, follow us, the intersection live, and uh, and you can check us out there. But I think it's important, the intersection, it gives a different perspective of things that are happening, not just uh, locally, but also nationally and globally. Mm -hmm. Do some politics, some current events, yeah. some entertainment news. The intersection, the intersection. intersection, all them things. Yeah, we're bringing it the all different together. Different points of view, right? And we've got we've got uh, feisty Nikki <laughs> <laughs> that will always level me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's bringing it about, and we don't hold back. We don't hold back here. You know, this is real, and I think because the issues that we're dealing with today are very real. And please join the conversation. Absolutely. And make sure you give us a call at 323-230-4445. We want to definitely hear your input. Mm -hmm. And if you got the Dash app or if you're on DashRadio.com, you can go to uh, Dash Talk X. We're about to go live in a couple of minutes at 10. We going live one, one minute, one and a half. We almost there. We're almost there. So uh, make sure you tune in. Follow us, The Intersection, live on YouTube. Also, download the app, Dash Talk X, and you can uh, follow us there as well. We are, uh, again, taking over uh, Zoe Williams' show, the Zoe, the Zoe What Show. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's <laughs> a good one. The Zoe What Show. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're at the intersection. I'm Senator Isidore Hall. And I'm Nikki Flores. And you're tuning in. We've got a lot of uh, things to unpack today from uh, Joe Biden jumps in, Meghan Markle, and looks like she's heading to Africa, you know. <laughs> Bernie Sanders uh, talking about incarcerated felons should vote. We're going to talk about a lot talk of stuff right all. here. So tune in, follow us, The Intersection Live, download Dash, Chat, Dash Talk X. You're at the intersection. Lean in. We can now say with sources directly involved in the planning, tell NBC News that Joe Biden will announce his candidacy on Thursday with an online video making his candidacy official. He will follow that announcement on Thursday with a public appearance on Monday with uh, union workers in Pittsburgh. We likely expect that uh, event to focus on the economy. Uh, these same sources tell us that he will then follow uh, that event with trips to all four early voting states, Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada, uh, in the weeks that follow. So uh, as you know, Andrea, and a lot of our viewers may have be aware, there's been a, a lot of different details, different uh, locations, different venues being bandied about. Uh, as we've been very careful to say, none of these details are official until they're locked in. These sources were meeting with the vice president this morning to finalize those, de those details. So with now, with much greater certainty, we can say that Joe Biden will be joining the very crowded presidential field uh, and hitting the ground running uh, in the coming weeks. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC. Yeah, so it looks like uh, looks like this is happening. It looks like Uncle Joe is getting in the race. Finally, he announces. <laughs> but uh, hey, way to show up to the party late. I mean, I guess everybody else did kind of get early on and everybody saw everybody else was getting in there. They was like, well, me too. Well, you know what? I've never thought about being president before, but since everybody else is throwing their hat in the ring, how about me too? Joe's like, I might be. I might be. But I think it was kind of like his to lose at this point, right? Not his to lose in terms of the nomination, but in terms of jumping in because Uncle Joe had the lead, right? right? He had the lead in the polls, right? Right, And so he didn't have to get out. Like all these other folks, they got in early. They raised a little fundraising because they anticipated Uncle Joe would get in and suck up the uh, the money. Well, yeah, and, right? and he has that name recognition uh, right. that, that a lot of the, the people who, because there's so many of them. It's 20, I think. Blow my mind. And more coming. So many of them that they trying to get out there so you can remember their name and say, 
it correctly by time. By, on, by, by time, time Uncle Joe. By the time Uncle Joe comes around. <laughs> and and you know, they tried to they tried to scathe him up, you know, beat him up a little bit in hopes to try to get him out of the race, the Democratic Party that was not led by the Republican Party. The Democratic Party, not the Democratic Party, but Democratic candidates. It's definitely gonna come back. Right? It's it's, uh, it's definitely gonna come back. Yeah, but it didn't stick this time. I don't know if it's gonna be you know, if it's going to stick, it's going to come back. But I don't mm-hmm. think it's going to stick to your point. Uh, but I also believe that, you know, they did it because they knew that he was in the lead. Right. Mm-hmm. I right. mean, yeah, you got to you go for the you go for the ones that count. Right. The ones that really matter. And I'm not saying that any of the other ones don't matter because you've got some great folks in here. You have a Kamala Harris. You've got a Beto. You've got uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, the I don't mayor, know, but the Beto, mayor. Beto got eclipsed by Buttigieg. That's uh, what you're talking about? <laughs> Beto got eclipsed. That's They're what like, I'm Beto is about. Beto That's anymore. what I'm talking about. Pete, Pete, yeah. Pete, Mayor Pete. He's good, though. I think, quite honestly, Pete will be a great, Pete or Beto will be a great vice presidential candidate. Kamala Harris will be as well. But I think, you know, I think the challenge that we're going to be facing is that you're going to need a vice presidential candidate that is in the middle, that can carry that middle of the uh, middle of the country base, that Bible Belt area, the mm-hmm. blue collar, things like that. We'll see. But I think, you know, they uh, well, how do you say his last name again? Buttigieg. Buttigieg. Like yeah. Buttigieg. It's going to be good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I think, you know, he's going to be a good guy uh, to contend with. But listen, uh, Uncle Joe's coming out with an online video. Mm-hmm. I think that's classic because he's going to be able to get that young uh, generation of folk that don't normally watch television, CNN, you know, you know he's going to be able to hit them. I think those mm-hmm. are, that's the demographics he's going to he, be going to. He has to do that, and he also has to hit the ground running with funds and yeah. get those fundraisings. And he said that he's not going to go for, like, the small donor like some other uh, candidates are doing. He's going to be looking for that big money. So that might be something that he might have to... Uh, answer for later too. So well, the Elizabeth Warren people have gotten farther and farther away from that, or started to demonize getting those large sums from some of these companies and lobbyists. So we'll see. We'll see how he does. But I'm sure he's gonna get that money. I mean, yeah, he's gonna get the he coin. Does. He's gonna get the coin. But the problem is that, and 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 I want to hear what you got to say on this three two three two three zero four 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 five. But the problem is that you've got the 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 wacky lefts out there that are basically talking about, you know, uh, we need $5 donors that talks about grassroots. But Uncle Joe has proven his roots amongst Democrats. So he doesn't have to prove the base that others have to prove. He's been out here. He's been doing what he's been doing. I think he's proven the base. That's all I got to say. Just saying. This is The Intersection on Dash Talk X with Senator Isidore Hall and Nikki Flores. You have said that you believe that people with felony records should be allowed to vote while in prison. Does this mean that you would support enfranchising people like the Boston Marathon bomber, a convicted terrorist and murderer? Do you think that those convicted of sexual assault should have the opportunity to vote for politicians who could have a direct impact on women's rights? If somebody commits a serious crime, sexual assault, murder, they're going to be punished. They may be in jail for 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, their whole lives. That's what happens when you commit a serious crime. But I think the right to vote is inherent to our democracy. Yes, even for terrible people. Wow. <laughs> wow. I don't know okay. what to say about that. So, I mean, you know, when I when I first heard it, I was like, the what, the what? Like... Everybody can't vote, but then no. I was I was thinking, you know, what would be the litmus test to to test that if if we were saying you know people should be allowed to vote after serving their time and they've done that and then they should be able to go on and vote should people who aren't felons who are incarcerated be able to right. vote and it kind of made me think you know like what if what if they already had the right to vote and the discussion was should we take it away from prisoners right. I don't think that I would necessarily be for that so it kind of makes me think well maybe. Maybe they should have the right to vote. I don't know, like, what kind of litmus test we go through other than having an address. There's nobody checking to make sure we're not a crazy person or got a record when we're out. <laughs> so it kind of it kind of complicates things when it I think about it that it way. Doesn't, it doesn't complicate anything, quite honestly. I think it's an, a, a stupid idea, quite honestly. It doesn't complicate anything. I think the fact of the matter is that, you know, when you go to jail, you, you your rights are taken away because you've committed... Some type of egregious crime, 
you know, uh, and so your rights are taken away. Now, when you get out of jail... I mean, all and, crimes aren't egregious crimes. Well, you're, you're talking about violent well, crimes or certain specific ones like murder and some violence and rape. Nikki. And that, that would be one thing. Nikki, you're... all crimes Nikki, aren't egregious necessarily. Nikki. And should people's human rights be taken away? That's what he's arguing. He's arguing that it's a human right here in the United Isn't States. It? Nikki. That's what he's arguing. Nikki, these people are not in jail. We're not talking about people with misdemeanors. We're Why aren't we? We're talking about people with felonies. Okay. Okay, not misdemeanors. If you have a misdemeanor, then you go to jail. I mean, okay. then you that can could vote. Be a, that could be a money crime. Nikki, if you're a... Um, if you're, that could be a money crime. That's not violent. If you... not a That's not a, mis, that's not a misdemeanor. That's a felony. I, I heard people, you when you said felony. We're are, talking about the same thing. Now we're only talking about felonies. No, if you have a misdemeanor, you should be able to vote. But if you ever have a felony, if you're in jail for slicing somebody's throat or taking somebody's heart it's out of their the body... It's not the only thing that felonies are for. You're it, talking about violence. Violence. If you're making a case for violent crimes or murders or something like that, I could understand that. But if you're just saying a felony, as if all felonies are the same type of felonies, that's not right. Well, when you're when you're in jail, I don't think people just people really don't give a damn about whether you're in jail for this or that. A felony is a felony. If you're in jail for a felony, well, people should. Well, people if you're, should if you're in jail, if you're in jail for a felony for four, five, ten years, twenty years, you should not be able to vote. Your rights are taken away. When no. you come out on probation, no. on no. parole, no. your rights you've 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 done your penance. You're out. Mm. Now you can vote. Give us a call. 323-230-4445. Now, here's the deal. I think this see this is that this is that socialistic perspective that the Bernie Crats have that the free education for everybody. Who's gonna pay for it? Everybody that goes to prison, you commit murder, you steal millions of dollars, you go to prison, you can you can still vote. No, your rights have been taken away, forfeited during this time. That's what this is talking about. Let's we take a caller. Hey, this is the intersection. What's your what's your, what's your uh, comment, caller? Hey, what's good, man? Hey, um, I heard y'all was talking. Uh, y'all, I heard y'all talking about the uh, felons. Yes. And and everything. Uh, you don't have to. The crime doesn't have to be violent. Exactly. In order to be considered a felon. Exactly. Uh, it's only the the degree. So, like, um, say if you do a petty theft. They give you misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. If you steal something that's worth over fifteen hundred dollars or more, exactly, it'll give you a felony. You and know it what becomes I'm a capital so crime as well. Fifteen hundred dollars is not even a lot of money, but mm -hmm. they can give you a felony for having over two two ounces of weed. But we know we mm -hmm. a lot of. And we know who but those laws uh, disproportionately do you think affect. I'm, do you think I'm ignorant? No, I don't think you're ignorant. Okay, I know, I know, I know what that is. I know what no. that is. I'm not ignorant. You just lumping everybody in. No, the no, same I'm, no, thing. I'm not. Yes, what, yes, what I'm saying, you are. what I'm, what I'm, you're saying, well, if you got a felony, then you must be a bad person. And I you don't said, deserve if you're the in vote, jail, and I don't if necessarily you're in jail, agree with that. If you're in jail for a felony, you're in jail for a felony, your rights should be forfeited. Thank you for your call. Until your time is served, or, or what? We've got another caller. Hi, thanks for calling. How y'all doing? This is D'Angelo from out of Oklahoma. Hey, D'Angelo. Hi, thanks D'Angelo. For calling. Oh, yeah. I've been checking y'all out the last couple of times. Y'all came on Zoe show. Y'all got a good uh, conversation. Thank you. But bro, I, bro, I think you're tripping, though, and I think you're being uh, a little self-centered in your perspective. <laughs> because, like the lady said, every crime is not the same. And just because you have a felony doesn't mean you're not a thinking person. Mm. Of course not. You can't make an educated decision. For you to say if you go to prison, nobody gives a shit about you, then we wouldn't have people like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Mm. <clears throat> I appreciate that. And no, no, no. I appreciate I appreciate your perspective. And I thank you for this. What's your name again, brother? I'm sorry. D'Angelo. D'Angelo, thanks again. No, stay online. I appreciate oh, your pers I, I appreciate your perspective. I'm not saying that one's rights, all rights, should be taken away when you go to jail. I know the difference between petty theft. I know a, 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 a difference between felonies and different counts of felonies. I've been in law enforcement for for a long time. All right, and served in the legislature for a long time. I made the laws. I'm the I I, I actually downgraded felonies to misdemeanors because of the over incarceration rate. I did that, so I know the difference with that. So what I'm but what what I'm saying is, is that, you know, there are certain rights, voting rights, uh, if should not be extended to those who have been in prison for long term serving a long term sentence. I think that once you are out of jail and you're on parole and you are uh, uh, or, or parole or probation, then those rights, voting rights should be restored. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that right that your rights should be permanently taken away from you is what I'm saying, brother. 
Yeah, I get that. But, but, but what I'm also saying is, okay, if you, you could do, in this country, you could do a minor thing and be taken to prison for 10 or 12 years. Yep. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So then, when you say a person with a lengthy sentence, if they give you a uh, the min- the the minimum, which is like eighty five percent, right? Yep. Then how, that's like what uh, eight and a half years out of ten. So so so, I'm, so, let me, so let me ask you this: So how do you differentiate uh, between who votes and who doesn't? It's simple. People who do things that add to the decay of society and are convicted for those actions, like murder, like rape, like uh, sociopathic tendencies, things like this. Robbery. Belong in mental health. In, yeah, because you have to think about it in terms of where people come from. Robbery. The circum- no, yeah. uh, if it was a violent robbery, if it was a strong arm robbery, then I could understand, <laughs> but no. Like you if it's just if it's just theft, without, so it's you perspective. Have robbery without a weapon, though. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, just breaking right. the or right. taking something out of, off of your person. So it's, well, that's what I'm so, saying. I think I think so you, we agree that yes, that violence. Yes. yes. D'Angelo, thank you so much for your call. Next caller. Next caller. Thanks for calling. You're at the intersection. Hey, how you doing? Hey. What's going on, man? I've been uh, paying attention to y'all for a while, man. This that's is the first time I ever disagree with you, so. I'm not Zoe. This First is Senator time, Isidore no. Hall. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Senator Isidore Hall. Wow, yeah. my bad. My <laughs> yeah, we taking over Zoe's show today. <laughs> for the record, this is not Zoe. <laughs> We're still in his show time right now. To the intersection with Senator Isidore Hall and Nikki Flores on Dash Talk X. Are you worried about impeachment, Mr. President? There is division among Democrats in Congress over what exactly to do next. Speaker Nancy Pelosi made it clear again today she has no plans for impeachment. In a letter to her colleagues, Pelosi wrote today, it's important to know that the facts regarding holding the president accountable can be gained outside of impeachment hearings. In that conference call with Democrats tonight, a source told NBC News, she said, quote, we don't have to go to articles of impeachment to obtain the facts. Republican Senator and Trump loyalist Lindsey Graham offered this prediction on Fox News tonight. There's going to be a stampede to impeach President Trump. They're going to use the Mueller report, anything they can find to try to destroy his presidency. Nancy Pelosi's not in charge of the Democratic Party. The radical left is in charge. So I expect that they will be impeachment uh, proceedings against President Trump. So here we are. I, I think that Nancy Pelosi, by the way, you're, thanks for tuning in. We, you're listening to Senator Isidore Hall and Nikki Flores on the intersection. We are taking over the Zoe What Show. Thanks for letting us uh, bite in a little bit. Zoe, follow us live, the intersection live on YouTube. You're at Dash Talk X. So we're talking about uh, what Nancy Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi, is talking about in terms of impeachment. Right. She's saying that she doesn't believe that uh, it's time for impeachment. Yeah, she just she's trying to keep everybody on an even keel. And uh, and they're I'm really disappointed. I I feel like they should have been just went for all this. Right. They had all the information. Like it's like they keep trying to prove it to the his base don't care so that you're not going to no. get them to be like, oh, no. finally, you got a video. And you're not kicking adding a puppy anything. like it don't matter what this man does. So right. the rest of us who already know that he's out here tripping, that he's right. been doing illegal things, that he clearly obstructed justice. They should have been gone on impeachment just for that. Like if you're waiting on the Republicans to be like, yeah, yeah, impeach him. That's it's not, not going to happen. happen. And if it's only going to be symbolic, then you might as well have done it already. Like right. you might as well get started. Right. And uh, so now they're saying like, oh, well, what we do agree on is next steps is more investigation into possible impeachment. And it's like either do it or not. Or, or get or off shift, the pot. Thank you. And shift and do something else. And let's really get back down to health care and all the other issues that, that really matter. The problem that I have to your point is that if the Republicans were in office, they would not give a damn about what they are doing. Exactly. They will do it and get it. If they were murderers. I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying if they were, for the record, they will shoot and deal with the results later. Mm-hmm. Right? The Democrats, when they're in power, they're always, oh, we don't want to upset the apple cart too oh, we much. Don't, we don't want to be in power while much. we're in power. Like, you in power. Flex and then the that. moment they lose power, they get destroyed by the Republican Party. Yeah. Because they were too scared to All pull the trigger. Right? It doesn't. 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They need to move forward. Nancy Pelosi needs to be the strong woman that she is mm -hmm. and work with her party. She's got multiple members in the leadership over there that are saying we need to impeach. Right. You got Maxine Waters out here, Congresswoman Maxine Waters out here saying we need to impeach. Been we need to impeach for, a long, for a long time. She was the first person to her credit down here in L.A. where we live. Mm -hmm. She was the first person to wave the flag of impeachment, sniffing out corruption in this administration. Yep. And and they act like that was too radical. That was too crazy, you know. And then it came around. Well, okay, well maybe we could talk about it, but let's not. Oh, I don't know because now the whole thing is they don't want to talk about impeachment because they think that's going to be used against the them. Affect twenty twenty, and it's going. They're going to lose. But that's not what impeachment is about. No. Is, is about impeachment is not about the next election. Right. Impeachment is about we got somebody horrible in office. We need that to we get need to him deal. out. Chit deal with everything else as it comes right. and after after the fact. But right. they're trying to. You know, plan ahead and all that. It doesn't work for the Democrats like that. I tell you what, they can't all get on one accord no, like the Republicans can. Of course. Like, hey, we just get, like f everybody else. Cool. Republicans <laughs> get stay in line. Right. Democrats do not. Right. Democrats are fragmented. Republicans, they even if they're wrong, they will all get in line. Right. That is not the behavior of Democrats. Unfortunately, they need to get their butts together and get out there and move towards impeachment. Yeah. On this guy, give us a call three two three two three zero four 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 five. You're at the intersection. You're listening to the intersection with Senator Isidore Hall and Nikki Flores on Dash Talk X. Dash Talk X. Detectives with Broward Sheriff's Office are investigating this video where a BSO deputy is seen pepper spraying a kid and throwing him to the ground. A witness tells CBS4 the group of students gathered after school at the McDonald's off Coral Springs Drive in Southgate Boulevard to watch a fight that was interrupted by BSO deputies. At this moment, a witness says the boy in the red shirt was picking up his friend's phone when the deputy pushed him in the head before spraying him in the face. Seconds later, another deputy pinned the teen to the ground and was seen punching him in the head. You can hear students screaming in the background. BSO says several students were questioned about the incident and have obtained these videos for the investigation. Now back over here live in Tamara. Yeah, so this is happening too too often, right? This is happening too often. Let's go to the call. We'll come back to this. Yeah. Oh, just kidding. Hey, caller. This is the intersection. Hello. Go ahead. You're online. Hey, this is uh, Sean from Atlanta. Hey, how's it going? What's your comment? Uh, I had a question. What's you guys' political affiliation? Uh, I don't have a political affiliation. I'm a Democrat. And you're a Democrat? Yes. Um, so what would, what, would, what, would, what would effectively happen with the Mike Prince presidency if President Trump is... Um, subsequently removed from office if he go ahead uh, from what i understand if he has if he has something to do with those high crimes that the president will be impeached for then a bunch of people can get rolled up into that and kicked out of the out of office um but i also am not exactly sure what would happen if he isn't connected to any of those campaign right. issues um, if he would just be installed yeah so if if trump is taken out of office for collusion corruption for whatever reason impeachment ratified by the senate and kicked out then mike pence would effectively take office if mike pence was involved in it then nancy pelosi would be number three in charge so it would move from the president to the vice president to the speaker of the house and it would only be for the remainder yeah, of trump's of the current term, term. It wouldn't, you know, it's not like they right. roll into the next election or anything like that. So. That's correct. Thanks for calling, man. Hey, it's the intersection. You're live on the air with us. What's, what's your comment? Hey, how you doing today? Hey, hey, how's it going? Thanks for calling in. Doing pretty good. You know, I've been watching Zoe West show for a while, and I love what you guys are doing with your show. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that the reason why it's hard because a lot of those Democrats are corporate Democrats, okay? They're getting money for the, from corporations just like the Republicans get it. So when it doesn't go, you know, all the way to what you want it to be, they kind of weasel back in. All these guys are making deals back and forth, I think. Mm -hmm. so, so because of that, across the line with partisanship, uh, you know, either way, they're making deals back and forth that helps their district. So if you're in the blue district but some conservatives like what you're doing, 
they're not going to be too upset if you go against what the party is doing. Yeah. Uh, at the, uh, right. So, like, what do you do with that? Yeah. And this is why I love what Tone and Yvette are doing because it makes it so much easier to concentrate. Like you said, they don't stay on cue, right? It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like, I don't understand how you get distracted. It's like herding cats stay on cue. And I, I just don't get how that is even possible. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm 31 years old. Yeah. I'm from Mississippi, man. I worked... I've worked as an engineer all over the country before I moved back here, man. Grew up here with the college here and moved out of the state. And that was the best experience, man, because you get to meet new people. You get right. to experience new things. And you get to you open up your mindset to yep. a, no, a different way of doing stuff. Right. And well, then now that I've moved back here, it's just like, wow. Yeah, you it's know, a- and, and, and so, the, like, progression is one thing. And, and Bernie, Bernie kind of helped move that progression to, you know, a more progressive platform for the overall Democratic Party, mm-hmm. but there, you see what they did to him in 2016. Hillary just did everything they, they did everything they could to help, help Hillary win that election, and right. he still lost. And yeah, so like, you yeah know, but 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 you know, and thank you for your call. You got to also realize that Bernie is an independent turned Democrat when he ran for office, so his progressiveness. Uh, so they should have told him if it wasn't good, don't come over here. That's true. We're going to screw you over <laughs> and really install Hillary as the nominee. I don't know about all that. I mean, they didn't they screw. Have been they did straight up. Well, they did. They, they did. There was evidence that Hillary's people was going door to door and doing BS yeah, to knock this man I, there, down. But, but when all the polls said the Hillary, that Bernie was going to be yeah, Trump, Hillary Clinton, not Hillary, 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 and we saw what Bernie, happened. Bernie Sanders and she just disappeared. Bernie into the Sanders wind. is a rip independent. <laughs> he changed his. Uh, affiliation to Democrat when he ran for president after he lost, he went back to independent and then he, and he pushed in, uh, his own agenda, forced it into the Democratic platform. Now he re-registered as a Democrat to run again on the Democratic platform. He's going to lose yep. and then he's going to go right back to independent. He is an you know? independent. So, yeah, so he is an he's, independent. He's not so, so, he so, runs so that he can run when the primary. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> and he runs to bring a socialistic perspective. And I'm not, I'm not necessarily against that. But when you're coming, you're not to, using when it like it's a nice word. Well, well, when you, when you, when you, when you're trying to come and destroy good Democrats, because you're an independent, you come in to try to destroy good Democrats. If good uh, Democrats and, means just going with the same way that things have been going, I that's not good. That is not good. No, I'm not saying up. that. I'm not saying that. He just doesn't. That's the beef. He with, comes with in, Bernie well, and the rest well, of the look, Democrats. Look what he is this did. whole like, oh, it's too progressive. Yeah, but look what he and did. that's what's happening look in what the Democratic well, Party with real did. legit Democrats but as well. Y'all we too progressive and we need to do it the way we've always done it. We have some great progressive Democrats. We have some great progressive. I believe in progressive issues. That y'all are always hating on. I, I believe in progressive <laughs> issues. And who in the hell is y'all? I'm talking about the, the <laughs> Democrats who've been there. I, the no, ones I, who are I'm down with the institution of the Democratic I believe, Party. I believe, they don't like the new I believe, ones. I believe that there is room for both to come together. You cannot say, hey, if you're progressive, you can't deal with the moderates. And moderates should say that I'm a moderate and I can't deal with the progressive. No, we need to come together and mm-hmm. stop fighting for sure. like we've been doing so that we can win the, the presidency of the United States of America. Mm-hmm. The problem with the progressives is that they don't like to deal with the moderates. The moderates like to deal with the progressives. The progressives mm-hmm. try to destroy the moderates because they're too moderate. It's and, not and like that the they don't like, like to deal with them. Like they that, want to shake things like up. The they don't like just the said, status quo. Like the gentleman just said, in those moderate districts, they have to be moderate because those are the people that are supporting them. Let's take the caller. Caller, thanks for calling in. Uh, what say ye? Hey, what's up? This is Tyrone calling from Phoenix. Hey, Tyrone. Tyrone. Thanks, thanks, thanks for, for calling. calling. Yeah, I tried to call in last week, but I couldn't get through. I was trying to call about the uh, vaccinations. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. yeah go ahead and give us your thought on that. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out like uh, how does how does if vaccinations make sense to force everybody to take it if uh if it's if the kid majority of the kids are vaccinated shouldn't that protect them against the kids that are not um for vaccinations to work it has to be like a massive group of people that have it cuz then the it starts to change like the 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 disease will start to mutate basically and be able to get those people who have been vaccinated because it gets stronger by getting passed around and stuff like that. That's a whole super scientific thing that I can't really explain no more than that. But I do know that that's how vaccinations work. They have to be more people that have it 
um, for it to work. It has That's to be right. fewer black, people who why don't. Black people even trust vaccinations in the first place. When so they many, well, so like many people do not. Mean, exactly, exactly. There are a lot that don't. So many people do not, and that's why because yeah. of those things that are legit things right. that happen in history that could lead somebody to believe. Like, right. do I really want to trust this that's right. being forced down my throat? But that's why it's been that you know, like it isn't a mandatory thing. It's not like everybody's baby gets poked and prodded. And right. That's how we have these kids who are out there without vaccinations. Without vaccinations and but if they want to participate in society where people have set those rules, then they're going to have to get vaccinated. They have to, they have to get vaccinated. They have to get vaccinated. It, and there are so many people right now, right now without vaccinations that are causing deaths because uh, they're infecting, quite honestly, and I'm just going to use that word loosely, uh, individuals uh, who are not vaccinated right. right now. And that's a problem. And so, I mean, we have people who have this measles outbreak in New York. We've got all this it's stuff. Here it's here now. in California. It's taking effect down in Orange County. And we've got, you know, your child right now uh, can be uh, adversely impacted uh, by an individual who is not vaccinated. So I'm just saying you got to look at both sides. I, I support vaccination for the record. I did in the legislature. I still do. I was vaccinated. Uh, and there are some that don't. And I respect that. But there are, things, there are ways that those who don't have to govern themselves in an environment that is pro-vaccination. Thanks for your call. Is the intersection on Dash Talk X with Senator Isidore Hall and Nikki Flores? Also, a developing story in extreme northern California. Two children were found locked in cages inside a home in Modoc County. Deputies served a search warrant at a home on County Road 101, east of Tule Lake National Wildlife Refuge. The 22 month old twin boys were found in two separate modified cribs you see here. They were stacked on top of one another, secured to the wall like dog crates. Deputies also found three firearms and evidence of a butane honey oil lab and suspected meth. The kids' parents, 25 year old Alberto Zendejas and 25 year old Mercedes Williams, were arrested for child endangerment among. Yeah, this is outrageous. Uh, two kids found in cages, uh, locked up like dogs and like animals. I'm so tired of hearing these it's, stories about parents doing their own children like this. It's I mean, not like horrible. it makes it any better to treat any child, whether it's yours or not. But just hearing about these parents abusing their own kids in Locking these horrible in chains. ways, chains and cages for your babies. It's just outrageous, and we just dealt with this family, uh, another family that was just prosecuted 25 years yeah. to life that had, what, 12 kids or something like that? Something crazy like that. And they were locked up in a house for 15, 20 years, never seen, never was able to see sunlight. And and I hope this parent uh, is one of those parents that are dealt with accordingly. You do not, it's just outrageous. I don't even lock my dogs up in cages, let alone children in cages. We have a call. Let's go to the call. Hey, you're on the intersection. How's it going? How you doing? I'm Rasheed from Atlanta. Hey, Rasheed. Thanks for calling. All right. Yeah, I want to talk about that vaccination thing. I mean, it's <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I mean, <laughs> for the CDC and all, they bring out these new strains of flu mm -hmm. shot that we got to get. Yeah. But I mean, that's the thing. You don't have to get that flu shot. <laughs> no, you know, I do, but you don't have to get it. I don't get the flu My shot. My mother doesn't get it either. <laughs> I don't get it. I never got the flu shot. My wife, she gets the flu shot every year. And one, uh, probably three times since I've been with her, she got real, She had a real bad cold. Yeah. I mean, other than that, I mean, shouldn't it be the same as the, uh, the vaccination? Because, I mean, I'm looking at it to where they're forcing everybody to get these vaccinations. And the crazy part is, they uh, was dropping some documentaries, well, not documentaries, but just some uh, papers talking about how the CDC was saying those measles mump shots were giving a lot of kids autism. That's that hasn't been proven. Yeah, there's no direct links from autism no. to to the vaccinations. No. Um, and there hasn't been any real recent changes in no, the law as far as vaccinations are concerned. For public schools, you always have to get your kid vaccinated because it's a public school. Right, when, right now, what it is is a lot of people who are doing homeschooling right. and um, who aren't putting their kids in school, who are just opting out of it. And then after that, they're sending their kid into other situations where they interact with other kids who have been vaccinated. So that's... Right. 
where like the danger can lie. The cross contamination, so to speak, not like that, but kind right. of sort of just for from a layman's perspective, right? Right. But yeah. but yeah, uh, I mean, there's always been vaccination laws as far as like public schools and sending them. I mean, even certain private schools will have that in their books that if you want to come here. So you it's really like to get certain privileges, right. you need to be vaccinated. But there is no like law. I mean, you can go unvaccinated all yeah. your life if you can make it like that. And there's also but a there are consequences, and that's what we're dealing with in the news right now. With right. New York and, and now, and now in L.A., yeah. in California. But there's also a law uh, that we passed in the legislature said a doctor, if your child, if you believe your child uh, will be adversely impacted by a vaccination shot, uh, that the, you, that child can opt out to. Right, and that's, that's how a lot of those people as right. well. And now they're looking to try and figure out if that's a loophole. Um, if, if some of those doctors were straight up bribed in some ways uh, to get that um, without their parents just didn't want that. So they right. had a doctor, you know, sign a note saying that. Right. Um, so, I mean, you, you know, it's going to get investigated law, some more for sure. Anytime there's a law, you know, there's always going to be a loophole to the law. For sure. Right. And somebody's going to always uh, find a way to get around that. I mean, hell, President, uh, 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 um, what's this guy's name? Trump. Uh, he found a way to get a loophole from serving in the military by saying he had a. I'm a, sure. He a, know all a the bone loopholes. spur or what have you. you know the so bank there's loan always, in, right. loopholes, tax loopholes. <laughs> right. All that stuff. Holla loophole, loophole. Thanks for calling in. Hey, it's the intersection. Thanks for calling. Hey, so you got to talk about vaccinations. At this well, now we are because we had a caller who brought it on back up. What you got to say about it? <laughs> We're trying to move on. <laughs> Tell us what you think. Why not? <laughs> well, let's move on then. I no, 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 no. no. What, you? No, 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 no. Come on. Well, look, man, how does a person that's been vaccinated get the same disease again if they've been immunized at work? Tell me, explain to me how that works. Uh, because of strains. The strains can, right. can change. I mean, we would really need to get some, some real deal scientists right. in here to talk about viruses like that. Right. Um, but the strains can mutate. Okay, so let me ask you this then. So then are they then projecting that we need to get more vaccines? Um, because of that then, because of the mutation is so great sometimes? I mean, well, how do you well the, whole, the whole thing is if everybody gets vaccinated, this is their theory, that right. if everybody gets this vaccination, then it doesn't it have a chance to morph. Right. It just kills it and it deads the disease. So right. we don't have the measles anymore, which we didn't for hella long for until some people years, brought it back because they were getting those waivers. Right. So, um, yeah, so that's how, that's how it works. It's like everybody has to get on board for it to work, basically, right. for us to all be safe with that. And if not, then it will keep mutating. And, and then, then we'll be back yes, here again. we will have to keep right. getting different measles vaccinations. Or they just keep, you know, trying to make them stronger. And it's it's a new one that will, you know, supersede the previous right. one is basically how it works. Thanks, Thanks for, calling. for calling. Thanks for calling. You're on the intersection. Hi, good morning. Thanks for calling. You there? Thanks for calling. You're at the intersection. Good morning. Are you there? <laughs> so it seems like this vaccination uh, piece is just it's serious business, right? And so, you know, it's it's varying opinions, and we respect those opinions, right? And, you know, everyone's not going to agree. You're going to have, you know, the rich, the poor, and the, the middle class all differing uh, in, in perspective on this. Right. I, I, don't sure. think, I don't think it's a black and white issue. Uh, I, do you think it's a class issue? I don't think it's a class issue. No. I think race does come into play if right. you feel like you have, uh, you know, you are a part of a people who's been tested on by our very same government. Right. Then, then I can understand how that can come into play, and right. and uh, those fears need to be addressed. Like I was saying before, like if they could come with a study that would address these fears, or if they would straight, you know, admit these atrocities. Right. But and, you and, know, and, and that's there, asking a lot of this, America. And there's this 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 story rolling around out there that the CDC said that there's a report with the that, autism. Yeah, and that's that's not proven. That's not a real report. That was an individual who worked for the CDC mm -hmm. trying to push a report, and that's the report that they were pushing in California, the legislature, so and, forth and so and on. And even if the vaccination is good, we can't tell how it's going to react with somebody's body. There right. was a couple of kids that had some adverse reactions. It wasn't like a massive, and it wasn't even like a, a repeated situation right. for those kids that were affected. It was just how the chemicals worked with their body, which is not something that we can plan for, unfortunately. Right. You're at. Uh, you're listening to the intersection on uh, the Zoe What Show. Yeah, yeah. Follow us at the intersection live on YouTube. You're at Dash Talk X right now. Give us a call. 323-230-4445. I'm Isadore Hall. I'm Nikki Flores. Give us a call. 
You're listening to The Intersection with Senator Isidore Hall and Nikki Flores on Dash Talk X. The singer kicked off Sunday's events at week two of the music festival in Indio, California, with a religious Easter experience and his famous family in tow. Say happy Easter. You look so pretty, guys. Chloe. Schmurf. Wife Kim Kardashian took to her Instagram stories to document the occasion and everyone's color-coordinated outfits. Morris West, who is performing at Sunday's service, matching outfits with mom. Check out this adorable moment showing daughter North playing with her cousin Penelope Disick. This is Stormy True and Shy in a few years. As for Kanye's Coachella service, the two and a half hour long performance featured a full band and choir wearing matching pink baggy shirts and pants while performing a medley of gospel songs mixed with a few of Kanye's hits like All Falls Down and Power. Kanye spent most of the performance wandering around and occasionally hitting the keyboard, only singing three songs in total, including a new song called Water. At one point, cameras even caught the rapper crying. Chance the Rapper made a guest appearance, so did DMX, who delivered a powerful message. You teach women to honor their men and men respect their ladies. Yeah. So the, All right, we moving on for vaccination. No more vaccination. We moving on <laughs> to us, the next. Hit us to the next. You're at the intersection on Dash Talk X. You're at the intersection. So, yeah, so this Kanye piece. I mean, it's some, everybody said they enjoyed Coachella. It was great. I had actually, I, I had some friends that actually performed in the choir group with uh, with Kanye. Okay. Uh, and that and all that nonsense and stuff. You know, the church service, I appreciate, you know, Kanye doing the church service and whatever that is, church with Kanye, you know, Kanye church, whatever that is. But how can you have... You don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I just feel like I mean, that's great and all. But it's but hypocritical. can you work on Kanye? Yeah, right. What you doing trying to have a service? And also... It's really just built around his music and, like, and his, his songs, and his he songs that he wants to sell for fifty dollars. Oh man, we haven't even gotten there. But I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> but I don't know. It just it just feels like. I mean, I guess some preachers and pastors is out here profiting off off you know the Lord. Well, wait, as they say. Well, wait. Let's stay with Kanye. Then we'll deal with that, right? So Kanye's. At his service, he's talking about, you know, we need to start respecting women and stop calling them B's and H's. And yes, that should never be the case. You should always respect women. You should never hit a woman. You should never call a woman out of her name. You should never do any of those things. But how can you say that on the mic on Sunday and your music reflects something different? That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. You know, give us a call. Tell us what you think. 323-230-4445. I just think that it's hypocritical. It's it's hypocritical for sure. It's like it's like it's like I need to see some track record of his for some form of time, <laughs> some length of time longer than like 2 months where right. he can act even right. and not be attacking people, right. not be talking about our people, his own people. And, you know, like getting voted off the island every other time he opens his mouth. He'd just be opening his mouth and what? I, th I think it's just all publicity <laughs> stunts. I, mean, I believe that he is bipolar. I believe that he has a mental health condition. I think he does need treatment. Uh, and there's so many people out here that are suffering from mental health who actually, they actually do need treatment. And I pray that they get the treatment. Uh, but I think he is, he's using his mental health as a benefit to him in terms of what he's doing, quite honestly. He knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, I don't know if he's using his mental health. Well, you, well, you know, he's using it. <laughs> well, <laughs> He's using this Sunday service, that's for sure. Saying, he's not, he's he's using, not, he's this, not like, using his mental? <laughs> he's using this, this gospel. He's just like he's taking using... these pieces of church yeah, and, and you know, profiting off of them in a way. It's hypocritical. Hey, callers, the intersection with your comment or question. Hey, it's Tennessee from Harlem. Hey, how's hey. it going? Thanks for calling in. What's hey. your name? Hey, thanks, Tennessee. Man. Tennessee. Um, Tennessee. So I just wanted to unpack the uh, 
you being a Democrat thing, and basically, what's your stance on ADOS um, and and the whole movement going going on right now surrounding that theory? And I'll uh, hop off the line and let you guys get stance on on what? Ask again. Uh, ADOS, American descendants of slaves. He said that he he's a Democrat, so mm-hmm. I just wanted to know what his position is on. On what, on like that. reparations or? Yes, exactly. On the on the reparations, movement. the whole discussion about it. Uh, listen, I believe that there should be reparations. That's my stance. That's my position. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm still waiting on my forty acres and a mule. I'm waiting on a mule. I, give me a quarter of an acre. <laughs> you know? Okay. I, I, yeah. No real talk. I mean, we're out here. Quite honestly, we're giving everything else away to everybody else. You know, uh, in other countries and things like that, you know, uh, the black folks need to get something, too, you know, and, and I'm waiting on my 40 acres and a mule. And that's all I got to say. I'm just being upfront and honest, you know. OK. You know, I'm just being real, Doc. I'm for reparations. I don't think we'll ever see. It. No, I, we're not going to see that. That's where I am. But I give us something. That would be, something. That would be wonderful. Do you not think that the Democratic Party is going to be able to deliver on this? Issue? I don't think I, no. any. I don't think anybody is going to be no. able to deliver on it because I don't think I don't think anybody, on, no matter what their party affiliation, can get the rest of no. everybody else to agree we, to admit to the atrocities right. that America has of, committed of our on, on our descendants, our, on, on okay. our ancestors. It's not going to happen because that would be an admission of guilt, and right. then they would be like, "Okay, right. and now we'll get," and that ain't happening. No, and we were just talking about earlier. You can't coddle the entire Democratic Party to do anything, right? And then. Even in, in that perspective, you're going to need Republicans, uh, right. uh, 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 two-thirds of, of a party. And you know uh, they think racism happen. is over, right. so they ain't coming aboard. Right. Well, they didn't even believe <laughs> the genocide happened, quite honestly. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? is real. So how, they're certainly not going to believe that you know we need reparations here in America because slavery call, never Tennessee. happened either. Tennessee, thanks for calling. Appreciate your call. But the real headline is that he's selling merch that is way overpriced and people are upset. So there was a lot of sweatpants and shirts and stuff they were selling. But what got the most attention were these socks that say church socks and Jesus walks. (laughs) It almost makes me laugh because it rhymes. As you can see, they cost $50 and people couldn't believe that someone would pay that for socks. Well, you actually get both pairs of socks for 50 bucks, but still, that's a lot of scratch. In addition to the socks, you can also get a t-shirt for 70 bucks, as well as a sweatshirt for up to 225 bucks. A lot of these have logos that say Holy Spirit, Trust God, and Sunday Service, of course. One fan wrote, Kanye charging 50 for bum-ass Coachella socks? Another said, they really selling them Kanye church socks for 50 righteous bucks. What do they do? Dip them in holy water? These price tags are ridiculous. I don't know about you guys, but I've been wearing the same socks since high school, so I'm not about to spend 50 bucks. This is The Intersection on Dash Talk X with Senator Isidore Hall and Nikki Flores. Yeah, so $50, let's say $50 for socks. $70 t-shirts. T-shirts and $225 for a sweatshirt at for the church service at Coachella. So basically just tour merch. For sale at the at the church service on Easter, he couldn't give a couple away. Just have five and just give those five away Dude. and have limited edition. I, I just I don't know. It just it's so it's so convoluted. It's like it's not a negative thing, so, from what I can tell. No. So that's that that's some positivity. If he's bringing the word to some people right. who are catching it who right. wouldn't have got it otherwise, that's right. great. If it's helping him work through whatever he's got to work through, that's great. But then you come down to the what you need, what you need merch? this money for? Come on, man! And it's, it's you just, ain't hurting right now. No, he, but it. he's capitalizing <laughs> off of poor black people who know that they want to be able to say I was there, and they're struggling to get to the place because I know a lot of people who couldn't. I mean, afford that it, wasn't but they all went, he was. That wasn't all he was selling. Know, it wasn't just black I people know, who was I out know, there. I know. You know, that's right. <laughs> that's real. Socks. That's real. But come this on, was Coachella. Coach, right? <laughs> I mean, real. That's right. You know, but come on, fifty dollars. What you what you say, Banks? What you say? He capitalizing off of the white folk money. Oh, for sure, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Right? Would you Would you buy socks with no. fifty dollars? Would you buy a T-shirt for seventy? No. What about two hundred twenty-five for? I ain't about that pair, pair of shoes. <laughs> I ain't going over one twenty-five, one fifty. Right? I got limits. 
I mean, come on, man. Fifty dollars. But I mean, he been playing with this since he called himself Jesus. Jesus, which I never referred to him. Okay, as. it's not even about the prices. Do you see the actual designs of the clothes? It's yeah. not worth. No, it's seventy five, two hundred twenty five. You didn't see the designs? Mm -mm. They're horrible. It's horrible. I, I mean, I saw what Tiana Taylor was wearing. It's horrible. You ever seen like the old and Roots movie and they had like the brown <laughs> yeah. dark dust? Yeah, on, it's called on the it's shirts. kind of. It's kind it of. I don't want to say that. Sweat sun, right? C word, cultish kind of deal. <laughs> but I don't want to say and that. It looks like he want to have his own church service yeah. on Sundays and become his own little I mean, cult. Yeah. His own Kanye West I don't want to say that. I hate saying that, but it's, it just reminds me. There's an undertone. There's like I, a I mean, I would just, hint of it. The thing you know. about him is he thinks that he's real special. <laughs> so it's like, has, right? did you ever go to, to church yourself or did you ever take your family to church? And then you were just like, I want to have my own. Like, how did this come about? Because it started with... A choir and let's sing the songs that I wrote. Yeah, <laughs> which, which is real Kanye of him. I don't think Kanye <laughs> from my from I've never seen on you know things where Kanye was visiting church service you know so much. So you know, but you don't today. People really are not going to the actual physical church. They're live streaming and. You know, but church his problem without walls is he thinks he's deal. so learned in right. so many ways. Well, he says he's so a genius, evolved and, and he such knows a the genius. word. Right. You know, he gonna teach himself the word, y'all. Yeah, and his, you too, if you listen. This, the church service, it's uh, it's inspirational from his, for his mom because mm -hmm. his mom was very into the church service. Oh, that's and good. Like, yeah. So, like him doing his Sunday church service, it's uh, like a a, a tribute, to his, a tribute to his mom. But it didn't get to the point. It got to the point where media blew it up so much where it's like now it's every Sunday, every right. Sunday where it was just a maybe once a month type thing. So mm -hmm. now well, it's because of the thing now. It's now a fad. media blew it up. Right. to It's a fad. I want to go right. to this. A celebrity. So I, I wanna, mean, he I is. Go hold up. This. Hold up. He is a Kardashian. So it's not like the media <laughs> wouldn't know. He's not a Kardashian. Sure the Kardashian is. is a West, right? Sure he is. <laughs> this he... is about Kanye, period. This is about Kanye and yeah. how he feels uh -huh. like he's Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the next. He feels like he's the next black Jesus, and that's why he's going to go out there and sell all these damn fifty dollars socks and all this kind of other shit like that. No, he didn't say it no. was. He didn't say it was going to nobody's black church. He no. didn't say it was going, going to scholarships. It was going to help some pulpits. So get he's fixed. going he to Compton and that. get he to fix like, those holes down there <laughs> in my the money. streets. I just didn't know church <laughs> church people had uniforms besides, <laughs> besides ushers. <laughs> Everybody in there is about to be wearing pink, yellow, whatever. In robes. In robes. Baggy robes. I'm saying. Coat like. I'm just saying. There's, a, there's kind of a little undertone. Yeah. I'm I don't saying, know. no, if I'm a celebrity and I get this invite from Kanye, I'm like, I ain't wearing this, following this dress code. Come Kanye. on. Man. Me I mean, look, we all know that there are a lot of pastors and reverends out there that have their own ego do what they do. Uh, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, so we, we get it. This is no different than what's going on. But come on, you inserting your own. Like Jesus walk songs mm -hmm. and yeah. you know your your, your secular type of songs yep. when you got people that really want to be saved and go right. to spiritual guidance right. or something like that. Yeah, this doesn't on, matter, man. man. It's, I it's, mean, but hopefully, it does a disservice. hopefully nobody walked in thinking that it was real church. And I hope they right. to Coachella. Cause, yeah, because they went, they went no, to church because nobody was getting Sunday service. They didn't do an altar call on the church on there Sunday. There was no anointing. <laughs> there was a, <laughs> there was no anointing. Nobody was filled with the Holy Ghost. Nor was there an altar call from my understanding. I mean, no, I guess, the, the pot. The, the, there was the offering. Was, the pot was being passed. Yeah. The pot was being passed. Kanye <laughs> was emotional, like, all oh, these people came for me. That's what he was doing, crying right. about himself. I don't yeah. Know. Give us I a call. 323 230 4445. I came with the church name. <laughs> we got a call. Caller, you say what? Thanks for calling. Good morning. Thanks for calling. You there? Are you me? Yes, we yeah, can we now. Can hear you. Yeah, I hear y'all talk about Kanye. Yeah, we talking about that Sunday service. Hey, turn your volume down a little bit. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, we can't blame Kanye for uh, trying to capitalize like everybody else is doing, right? Ain't that what everybody else is doing? <laughs> I don't know. He got a point. Are they? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm down here in Baltimore City right now. Oh, man. Getting kicked out of office. I know for <laughs> seven hundred. A lot of people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, she wrote a book, you know, and she had her the hospital to buy her books or something like that. The mayor down there in Baltimore. Yeah, I know the whole story. But you know, this but did she did she do it on Sundays only in the name of Jesus? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> See, but Kanye, the reason why Kanye doing this, I'm going to break something down to you, and I'm going to get out of here because I'm at work. Go ahead. Kanye, <laughs> thanks for watching us at work. I appreciate it. Kanye West knows that the church age is over and um, that the Lord has been done with the churches and the religious and the world system religions are really not a part of the true God. So anybody capitalizing off of that, gotcha. anybody that's falling for the trap, falling Thank you. for that, they are people that actually want to be led by somebody. So, Well, he just out here trying to get a piece. Hey, thanks for your call, brother. God bless. Yes, sir. Hey, it's the intersection. You on live? Hey, how you guys doing? We're good, good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm, I want to uh, tie tie in on the Kanye West. Yes, please do. Talking about. Yep. Well, the thing I'm I'm kind of trying to understand why there's so much hating you guys have towards Kanye West and what he did. <laughs> <laughs> no, one seems, no one seems to complain when it's when it's time to go to buy some Gucci. <laughs> when it's time to buy some Louis Vuitton, no one seems to complain about that. So, yeah, I don't... He bought some shirts, he got some stuff made. Give me one second to explain this. I, I was listening to you all, and it's, it's mighty ironic. Yes, he has some different things he wants to do. He's a businessman. Mm -hmm. And if that's somebody black that's doing it, mm -hmm. why is that somebody black that the first thing I had to do is say what it needs to be, X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. You wasn't there when it came down to put that project together. Mm -hmm. You wasn't there for the promotion and et cetera. If you don't want to buy it, then don't buy it. Mm -hmm. But why don't you sit on YouTube, which is an international platform, mm -hmm. and try to bash another black mm -hmm. that's doing something? Are you talking mm -hmm. like Kanye ain't bashed all blacks, right. all that's basically descendants what you're of slaves, here. and all of that? Because he's done Cause he's a done lot. That. That's why I dislike Kanye. Yeah. We don't have nothing to do with him being black. And 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 by the way, Kanye, from his perspective, has not done anything in his perspective to. Hey man, thanks for your call. We'll finish this up. Uh, Kanye has bashed slavery. Says slavery didn't exist. I mean, he's not a descendant of slave. Clearly. I mean, that based on what he said, do you remember that conversation on TMZ? No. Uh, and the confusion is, and besides the fact that Kanye ain't a part of the black community, and he no. doesn't see himself that no, way. No, he doesn't. If we he got did, another he call. wouldn't say some things that he said. I agree. Let's go. Okay. So listen, you're uh, at the intersection. Uh, I'm Senator Isidore Hall, and this is Nikki Flores. You're on Dash Talk X, listening on Dash Talk X. We thank you for joining us, and thank you, Zoe, for allowing us to the occupy your station on the the Zo What Show. Zo Williams, my boy. You'll see us this time, same time, next time on The Intersection. Follow us on YouTube, The Intersection Live on Dash Talk X. God bless you. And be nice to people.